so welcome back so today we are starting a new module uh, which involves chemical reactions in ideal gas phase so what we will be studying in today's lecture we will see what is a reacting ideal gas mixture we will also see what is a non reacting ideal gas mixture we start from there and then we will extend our discussion to reacting ideal gas mixtures then also how to obtain the chemical equilibrium constants of ideal gas mixture these are the two things which we will be studying in detail so what we have learned from the previous modules so from the previous modules we have learned a framework which permits us the calculation of thermodynamic properties okay so we have seen we have calculated several thermodynamic properties whether it is monoatomic diatomic or polyatomic gases and uh, how we can calculate it from partition function and partition function in place what we do is we get some information from spectroscopic data for example the rotational temperature and vibrational temperature so these are all results of spectroscopic measurements so indirectly we are using spectroscopic measurements to predict thermodynamic properties in the previous lectures and then we made use of the statistical thermodynamics and calculated the various thermodynamic properties for example we studied uh, thermodynamic properties like uh, internal energy helmholtz free function then enthalpy then the gibbs energy likewise entropy likewise we calculated all these properties with the use of statistical thermodynamics in a similar manner we will be using this or executing this in the case of chemical reactions so the chemical equilibrium constants is similar or analogical to chemical reactions it is the chemical reaction constants or chemical equilibrium constant is as you know it is the tells us the magnitude or the extent of the reaction so it can also be obtained from the same spectroscopic information what do we mean by same spectroscopic information is that can we obtain the chemical equilibrium constant from the single atom partition function that is what our aim is if we can do that then we will see these different cases where we will apply those partition function we can use it in the ideal gas phase reaction or we can use it for predicting the degree of ionization in a plasma or it can be also a partially ionized gas or there are also a large reactive contribution to the heat capacity how uh, ions provide a large reactive contribution to the heat capacity all this can be measured using the partition function so let us first take the simplest of the system that is a non reacting ideal gas mixture consisting of molecules a and b so let us suppose there are n a number of molecules of species a and n b number of molecules of species b in a constrained volume v and a temperature t so the partition function for such a system is given by so this we know already just i am writing it again so here q of na function of the number of molecules volume and temperature which is equal to summation across all states i of the system e to the power of minus ei by kt okay so the partition function having number of molecules na nb constant within a volume v and temperature t the summation of all the exponential boltzmann terms that is with the individual energies ei so i is what i is here is a macroscopic state so you sum up all the macroscopic state energies so you will get the overall partition function so let us suppose if ni let ni be the vector of occupation numbers for the ih state so if suppose uh, you know if you have a ni state it means this ni state is made up of these particular elements the elements are ni is ni a1 it means the single molecular energy how many number of molecules of a are in the first single molecular energy state within a macroscopic state of i then similarly na2 is the second molecular energy state of the same macro system i like that 
Similarly, we can define NB1, NB2, NB3, these are the number of molecules of B occupying the single ground state energy named as 1, 2, 3 like this. So, this is a vector. So, if this is true, it means I can write NIAJ as the number of molecules of species A in the jth energy state of species A molecule within the macroscopic state I. So, these numbers tells us the occupation numbers, the how many molecules are in the first energy state, how many are there in the second, third like that for molecule A and for NB1, how many molecules of B are in the first, how many in the second like that. So, if it is true, then I can write this expression, this will also be true, that is summation J n a j i. So, this will be nothing but n a. If I sum uh, across all the number of occupation numbers across all the j energy states and summation of n in the ith microscopic state b of j across all the states j which is nothing but n v. So, this is the way you define number of molecules of Na and Nb. But we know species A and B are indistinguishable. So, it means that I can separate out their partition function. So, what it is? So, I can write down Q of Na, Nb. So, I can separate out the partition function. So, this will be nothing but the partition function for Na number of molecules within the same volume multiply by partition function of NB number of molecules within the same volume and temperature, okay? the product of these two because they are indistinguishable. Again, we assume that the molecular energy states are very, very high as compared to number of molecules. So, no two molecule will occupy the same energy state. If that is true, then I can write this also true. So, Q of If they are not occupying the same energy state, I can write them in terms of product. So, it will be in single particle function, it will be QA to the power of Na by Na factorial multiplied by QB to the power of NB by NB factorial. Okay? So, it means if I have Na number of molecules and NB number of molecules, the small QA is a single partition coefficient for molecule A and small b is single particle partition function for molecule B. So, this is the partition function in terms of single atom partition function. So, but if such that A, B, C, D like that many number of molecules species are there and they are all non-interacting. So, for S non-interacting species, this will take the form Q. Let us say the mixture contains N1 number of molecule, N2 number of molecules, N3 like that till Ns number of molecules all constrained between the volume V and temperature T. So, this will be nothing but the product of when I goes from 1 to S you take a product Qi to the power of Ni by Ni factorial. Okay? This is nothing but the product of the individual partition function raised to the number of molecules to the respective factorial. You do the product you will get the overall partition function. These are all for non-reacting ideal gas mixture. So, it means I can also obtain from the previous expression the thermodynamic properties. For example, I want to obtain the Helmholtz free function. Helmholtz free function, again let me remind you that the expression which we derived will be valid for all the cases. So, whatever expression for Helmholtz energy, Gibbs energy that will hold true. So, A is minus kT ln Q. So, in this case, I can write the Q from that a term will be minus kT ln Qi to the power of Ni by Ni factorial. Okay? And this I can further simplify as minus kT then summation of I goes from 1 to S Ni ln Q into E Qi into E by Ni. Okay? Either way, I have converted ln 
the product term are taken out outside so it replaces with the summation term. So this is the expression where we get the Helmholtz free function. So I here indicate either atoms or diatomic or polyatomic model. It can indicate anything I. So pressure will also follow ideal equation state when there are number of molecules of Ni that is Na, Nb, Nc or N1, N2, N3. If all are known then th also the total pressure will follow the ideal gas law. So it means that P is given by Kt do ln Q by do V. This we have already derived in the previous lecture. Substitute Q here in the, in the previous slide and then do the logarithmic and then take a derivative with respect to volume. So you will get simply Kt upon V into summation Ni. So it means this follows the ideal gas law. because we are talking about non-reacting ideal gas mixture. Okay. Now let us talk about reacting gas mixtures. So in a reacting gas mixture, the partition function for a simple mixture, again we consider the similar mixture where any number of molecules of A and NB molecules of species V is present in a mixture. If that is true, we already know that formula Q is equal to Na NB within the volume V temperature, this we have already just now wrote. Okay. So for a pure gas, it will be simply NVT because you have similar type of atoms and it, this will be QN by N factorial. So let us consider a simplest example for carrying out the partition function. We consider an example of A isomerization reaction A goes to B and we again B goes to A. We are consider this expression and then we obtain the partition function for such a reaction. So what is the effect when the chemical reaction occurs? Its prime aim is to make available to each molecule the energy states of both species. So it means you have energy states of Ea and energy states Eb. So now what happen is when we talk about in the statistical thermodynamics panel it is to make available that is uh, you make available the chemical reaction all the states available for both A and P. So if I want to write it in mathematical terms this will take up the equation overall equation is Q and all the accessible energy states j e to the power of minus e j by k t then raised to the power of n by n factorial or this is nothing but q n by n factorial. So it means n here is sum of Na plus Nb. So all the possible accessible energy states are in this epsilon Ej. So for a single molecule what you have is Q. It means all the accessible states e to the power of minus Ej by Kt which is equal to. So Ej I can write down as Ej and it at any instant of time it will be nothing but the energy of molecule species A plus energy of molecule species B. So if I want to write down and then separate out this will be e to the power of minus Ej A by Kt plus e to the power of minus Ej B by Kt. So it means all the states states available to A and all the states available to B. So it means A and B I have separate out okay. or I can write down what is this, this is nothing but QA and what is this, 
this is nothing but qb so it is just the sum total of the partition function the single atom partition function for species a plus single atom partition function of species b okay so this rearranges to because q is q to the power of n by n factorial so this obviously will be q a So this is the expression then, so where, where Na total number of molecules is fixed, nothing but any instant Na plus Nb that is fixed. Now this statement can also be derived using a less obvious but a comprehensive approach. So the initial premise of our analysis, what we thought that we need to know the precise quantity of molecules of species A resulting from a chemical reaction but it cannot be determined with certainty. Let us say at an instant of time you may have Na and B. That Na and B can be of any value. Let us say if you have 10 molecules or 10 molecules. So let us say Na plus NB is fixed. So you can distribute 10 in many ways. You can either have 1 molecule of A and 9 molecules of B or you can have 2 molecules of A and 8 molecules of B or 3 molecules of A or 7 molecules of B. So, there may be many such possibility depending upon time. So, that is means that you have to add up all this possibility or you have to add up the probability state, the probability of all these possibilities. So, it means these particular molecules of A and B obviously can range from 0 to N, N A can go from 0 to N, so do N B which can also go from 0 to N. Here n represents the sum of initial quantities of Na0 and Nb0. So I can write down n to Na plus Nb is equal to the initial number of molecules of A and B. So this is very important, this constraint needs to be satisfied. So it means if the number of molecules is 10, let us say 10, if it will be can be either 1 or 9, 2 or 8, 3, 7, 4, 6, 5, 5, like that. There are so many possibilities. So let us write the possibilities in terms of mathematical expressions. So the partition function thus becomes what? It will become Q. Let us suppose in the first case all the molecules are of A. So the partition function will become QA to the power of N by N factorial. Okay. Now let us suppose you have one molecule of B. Obviously then A will be N minus 1. So, your overall partition function is this. So, this will be n minus 1 factorial into 1 factorial. So, 1 factorial is 1, I am not writing. Or you may have QA n minus 2 and this QB whole square, you can get n minus 2 factorial by 2 factorial. Like that, keep on trying out all the possibilities. So, let us suppose if I go here. The last possibility will be QA, QB, N minus 1 by 1 factorial into N minus 1 factorial. And the last one will be the another extreme, all the molecules are of B, so it will be N factorial. Okay? So, overall partition function can be either of these possibilities. So, it means if I want to write down in terms of summation, it will be summation of N A goes from 0 to N double summation, N B goes from 0 to N, then Q A to the power of N A into Q B to the power of N B, N A factorial by N B factorial. Okay. I have summed them up and I have written the overall expression. But there is a restriction. What is the restriction? The restriction is this should be also as we follow n equal to n a plus n b is equal to n a naught plus n b naught. Always this constraint should hold true. So I can rewrite this expression in this manner also q n a goes from 0 to n q a to the power of n a Qb the power of n minus Na 
by n a factorial into n minus n a factorial. So, what is the difference? So, from this expression, expression 1, I have made converted double summation to a single summation by replacing n b with n minus n a. Okay. So, if you do that, then I can also multiply and divide by n factorial. So, if I do like this, so it will be n factorial upon n a factorial by n minus n a factorial q a to the power of n a into Okay. So, this is the way I can write down, but this expression is nothing but as I told you this will be nothing but simply equal to q a plus q b to the power of n by n factorial because if you see this expression it is similar like a binomial term expression. So, this expression you see if you recollect we did in the previous lecture degeneracy and q a. So, anything replaced by this x to the power of some expression binomial term expression y to the power of something. So, it becomes x plus y to the power of their subscripts. So, it is addition of the subscripts. So, n a plus n minus n a that becomes n. Okay. So, n factorial by n a factorial by n minus n a factorial. So, be based on the binomial expression we are again obtaining the same expression which we have just now saw for the single atom molecule. So, both ways you can have this expression that is q a plus q b to the power of n by n factorial. Now, let us move to the chemical equilibrium constant. So, the initial approach is grounded in the interconnectedness of the class statistical and classical thermodynamics. So, it means if you have a species a, b, c, d in a mixture and a chemical reaction is occurring, it means you have to find the Helmholtz energy in this case a Helmholtz energy which has the lowest n value. The lowest the value of Helmholtz energy that will be give us the equilibrium composition that is n a and n b or more than n c n d number of molecules. So, you have to find a condition where you can minimize the Helmholtz free function from the partition function or this suggests that a should be minimized that is n a should be minimized while adhering to the given constant as below. So, what are the constraints? That is n a n a 0 the initial concentration of a and b into n. So, we know a equal to minus k t l n q. Okay. So, it means l n q means what I will do is l n q. Now, to obtain l n q you must be knowing what is q. So, q is the expression which we got earlier. What is this q? We have seen it is nothing but q a by n a into q b by n b by n a factorial by n b factorial. Now, what you do you substitute here l n of this a equal to minus k t l n of So, you take the ln terms and apply Stirling's approximation. So, Stirling approximation you know n factorial is equal to n ln minus n. So, this particular approximation you apply when you take the ln of this. So, if you do that you will get I take from the equation. So, let us suppose this is equation 1. Let us first see what is ln of q. ln q will be equals to n a l n q a minus n a l n a minus n minus n a into l n of n minus n a. 
So what I did from the equation 1, I substituted nb with n minus na. Here also nb with n minus na. Then I took log. So if you take log, this will be minus n minus na. So n minus na factorial is nothing but n a minus n a into l of n minus n a minus n minus n a. So if you substitute all these values and then simplify, you will get this expression, expression 2. So n a here is a variable of integer type. So issue is now what we want to do, we want to a is minus kt ln q. So it means we have to maximize ln q. So as to minimize a. Only issue is you can do a derivative of both the sides but issue is here we are dealing with number of molecules which is not continuous it's a discrete value but in this case studying a system with a large number of molecules of the order of 10 to the 23 it is reasonable to treat na as a, a continuous variable because the number of molecules so large that this na can be used as a continuous variable negligible difference between Na or Na plus 1. So we can differentiate with respect to variable Na, the expression 2 which we obtained in the previous slide. So you will get d l n q by d n a equals to 0 equals to l n of q a minus l n n a minus n a by n a minus l n q b plus l n of n minus n a plus n minus n a by n minus n a okay if you do the derivation of equation 2 you will get this so i am equating it to 0 we have to maximize this so if you simplify this entire terms you see these terms will cancel out this one this one is one it will cancel out overall what we get finally is this expression ln q a minus ln n a minus ln q b plus ln of n minus n a which is equal to zero so all it implies that q a by n a is equal to q b by n b or n b by n a is q b by q a. So it means the ratio of number of molecules of b and a is exactly the ratio of their individual partition function. But sometimes we write in terms of partition function that is equilibrium constant can be defined as in this manner q b by v upon q a by v this way which is nothing but n b by v so what is this expression we know the equilibrium constant from definition is nothing but number of molecules of b to number of molecules of a so you can assume the numerator to be the product and denominator to be the reactant so number of molecules so when we talk about we don't write about number of molecules we talk about concentration so you divide by the volume of the mixture it becomes a concentration so nb upon v is the concentration of molecule b in the product side and na by v is a concentration of reactant so that is nothing but simply qb by v by qa by v this uh, equation is follows from this expression but it is always good to write in terms of ln term so ln of kn equal to ln of So it's always good to write in terms of ln because the values are so large q a and q b you will not be able to divide it properly so ln of the equilibrium constant is a much more convenient on an apt manner you can reproduce the equilibrium constant so this is one method what we this method involves the minimization of the helmholtz free function and the second method what we do is we maximize the probability so maximum term method this is called the maximum term method so what is this it is that 
probability that a system contains exactly n a molecules of type a and n minus n a molecules of type b. So, what is the probability that my system has exactly n a number of molecules of a and n b numbers of molecules of b. So, let us write in terms of probability and then we will maximize the probability. So, that expression is nothing but p of the probability which will be a function of number of moles of a is nothing but q a to the power of n a into q b to the power of n minus n a n a factorial by n b factorial or n minus n a factorial divided by q. So, this in terms of probability. So, this is the probability, the absolute probability that n a number of molecules or n b molecules are there in the system. So, if you remember that this we particular we have already derived earlier. So, based on this probability what we will do? We will try to maximum value of p n a. So, here this q is nothing but we derived earlier it is q a plus q b to the power of n by n factorial. So, now let us do the maximum value p n a and let us suppose at n a equal to n a star you get the maximum probability. So, you do this for this for what you do it take the derivative. So, first convert them into ln terms. So, if you do the ln terms it will be n a ln q a. So, from equation 1 here from equation 1 you get equation 1 you get n a l n q b q a plus n minus n a l n q b minus l n of n a factorial minus l n of n minus n a factorial minus l n of capital Q. Now, again apply the Stirling's approximation for those these the logarithmic term and simplify you will get ln of p of n a ln q a plus n, n minus n a ln q b minus n a ln n a plus n a just breaking it by Stirling approximation minus n minus n a so minus minus become plus plus n minus n a then minus l n q ok now we have to simplify this term let us go to the next slide so so d l n of p of n a this becomes equal to 0 or you get ln of q a minus ln of q b minus ln n a minus 1 plus 1 plus ln of n minus n a plus n minus n a into 1 by n minus n a I am doing the derivative of individual terms minus 1. Simplify this you will get ln q a minus ln of q b minus ln of n a n minus n a. So, I am putting here asterisk here because at this point you have the maximum probability which is equal to 0. So, again if I simplify this I will obtain the same expression as before. So, it becomes q a by q b then becomes is nothing but a n a star by n minus n a star or it becomes n a star by n v star or another way of writing it in terms of concentration you divide by the volume of the mixture Na Nb star by V equal to Qa 
by V which is equal to the equilibrium constant. Okay. So, most probable state of system is that one in which the number of ratio of two species has the same numerical value as that of the partition function ratio. So, the most probable state of having n a and n b number of molecules in the mixture is the ratio of their partition function. So, we come to the end of this lecture. So, what we have learned here is we have found out two methods for obtaining the equilibrium constant. In first method, we obtained it through the minimization of the Helmholtz free function. In the second method, we maximized the probability term and we obtained the same results in both the cases. So, please follow this the chapter 5 of this book where the details of these reactions are given. Thank you. Mm -hmm.